Meyer, thank you as always. Let's welcome in now former federal prosecutor Nima Rubani. Uh, Nima, it's great to have you here. You know, the jury has really gotten a rare inside look into the National Enquirer through David Pecker this week, as you know. Much of this not unknown to those close to this world, but do you believe there was a moment when he was on the stand and you thought, that piece will be extremely consequential to the case or may be effective in swaying the jury one way or the other? I do, Kelly, and you're right. This is a fascinating insight into these catch and kill stories, not just related to Donald Trump, but other celebrities we've heard about, Tiger Woods and Mark Wahlberg and Rahm Emanuel. But I think the key testimony from Pecker yesterday was the fact that he said that Trump just cared about the presidential election in 2016 and not his family. Why is that critically important? Because we all know that you know false business records they're just a misdemeanor under New York law unless they weren't furtherance of or to cover up another crime. And of course, the prosecution is arguing that this was all related to election fraud and misleading the American public. So to the extent that Trump's actions were related to the election and not saving his family from embarrassment, that helps the prosecution. You know, and now it'll be Team Trump's turn to sort of take jabs at some of that. If you were advising his defense team, how would you handle this cross-examination? And what holes would you try to poke into that testimony right out of the gate? Well, there's two things they're trying to do. They're trying to attack Pecker's credibility. And we saw that yesterday and as well today. You know, so you, there was some important details regarding the meetings, the timing and who was there that Pecker has been inconsistent about. So that's going to continue. But I expect the cross-examination to get even more aggressive because we saw during the opening statement that they said that Pecker has a motivation to lie because he's testifying under a grant of immunity. And he has a financial motive to try to sell more magazines and elevate his profile. So there are all eyes on this gag order as well. The judge is holding a hearing next Thursday on whether or not to hold the former president in contempt of court. Uh, the prosecution now says he violated this order 14 times. And the judge's remarks so far, as you know, they have not been favorable to Trump's team. So what factors do you think will weigh the heaviest in making this decision, Nima? And at this hour, do you have a prediction regarding how all of this will fall? I do, Kelly. I fully believe that. Judge Juan Marchand will find that Trump violated the gag order multiple times. The bigger question is, what is he going to do about it? Is he going to impose nominal fines of thousands of dollars? That's not going to change Donald Trump's behavior. We saw it in the previous New York civil fraud case where Judge Engeron sentenced him to five and ten thousand dollars. That's walking around money for the former president. So I expect Trump to continue to violate the gag order. And the question is, is Juan Marchand going to do something significant? by holding in contempt, or are we going to see those same nominal fines that have been floated around? And we're all awaiting uh, this testimony as well from Michael Cohen in this case. Based on the defense's opening statement this week, it sounds like the strategy is going to be to discredit Michael Cohen. How big of a task do you think that will be, Nima, especially when he's also slated to take the stand? It's going to be a huge task, and I expect Michael Cohen's cross-examination to last days. We all know that he's a convicted felon and an admitted liar. And Trump's team is going to argue that this is a disgruntled former employee that has a motive to lie because he wasn't a member of Trump's team when Trump took office in 2017 after the 2016 election. So here's someone with an ax to grind, and here's someone whose sole purpose in life is to take down the former president. So what the state needs to do is to have independent evidence corroborating Cohen's testimony. Something like that Karen McDougal audio recording, I think, is going to be very telling in this case. Yeah. Well, we have eyes on the courtroom today. We'll see what the latest developments are. Nima Romani, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kelly. And staying in New York, Columbia University extended this morning's deadline for protesters to clear the encampment on the school's lawn. Negotiations continue.